Leon and Tanya had unsuccessfully attempted to use a hitman against their own daughter on three different occasions. Three occasions? You do it! You scrawled on this video to do it! It's your boy daddy, Scobar Drupal! Alright y'all, we back with another big body banger, you feel me? Listen, today we got something crazy. This is actually, it's not even just crazy, it's sick. This family or these parents hired a hitman to off their 16 year old daughter now i don't know exactly why that's why we're watching this video but this, these parents they hired a, if y'all don't know what a hitman is a hitman basically they'll go and do what to do to a person that you want them to do to do to and i'm not talking about like you know what I'm, I'm talking about like boom boom die die stuff you know what i'm saying i can't say it because youtube will be tripping but they had a hitman to do that to their own freaking daughter. So we just been hop right into this because I'm excited. To, well, I'm not excited. I'm curious to see what the heck going on in this video. Um, so yeah, let's just hop right into this. When one of the brightest and most loving girls in a community is turning 16, you can only wish for the best in her life. Janelle was a loving, very intelligent, smart young woman who wanted to be a doctor who was an honor student. That was the way people would describe Latania Janelle Carwell, widely known as Janelle. Surely she had a bright future ahead of her. So on her 16th birthday on April 17th, 2017, which also happened to be Easter Sunday, she decided to have a cookout with her family and friends, not knowing that a few hours later, her fate was going to take her far from the life she had dreamt of. Now, Janelle had a seemingly ple- This her parents? So this is Janelle. This the mama and this the dad? Who the heck is this long next person? Pleasant and peaceful life next to her little sister, her mother Tanya Tripp, and her stepdad, Leon Tripp. As a teenage girl living in Richmond County, Augusta, Georgia, Janelle just wanted to become a doctor someday, which reflected the kind of heart that she had. And that is why what happened on the night of her birthday took everyone by surprise. On that night, her mom went to bed early while Janelle and her stepdad stayed up celebrating. Or at least, that's what Janelle's mom told the police. But it seems like they didn't stay up that late, as it was reported that by midnight, Janelle was already in bed. However, a few minutes later, she was woken up by her stepdad who asked her to go with him all the way to Clarks Hill, South Carolina. And since it was only a 28 minute drive, it didn't seem like that big of a deal to her. First of all, why are you waking me up to drive with you 20? You my step, first of all, stepdad. You know what I'm saying? It's, even if it was your real dad, your real mom, whatever the heck, why are y'all waking me up in the middle of the freaking night to drive with y'all somewhere? Go with your husband. Go with your wife. Leave me alone. Except that it was almost 1 a.m. in the morning. You just can't be good with you. Bro, I'm not. You just can't be Who is this old lady? Get off my freaking screen. Who comes right to your front. So you all may be wondering. Why would he need his stepdaughter's help at this time of night? What stepdad wanted his daughter to go with him to help another guy at one o'clock in the morning? He said he was going to help a friend who was having problems with his car. And so but what does that have to do with her? Why would she go? Like that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Since Leon didn't know how to use his phone or even Google Maps, he probably thought it was a good idea to take a tech-savvy young woman to help him out. But then, the next day, when Janelle and her stepdad didn't make it back home, her mom started to worry. And just like any worried mom, she called the police to inform them of what she think may have happened. I've been calling and texting and leaving messages and nothing. Janelle and her stepdad had officially gone missing and they were not picking up their phones. During the month that followed this awful event, Pastor Angela Hardin took the case to social media, pleading for clues and going live on Facebook with Janelle's mom, Tanya Tripp. And if the worry of a missing child wasn't enough already, Mrs. Tripp then revealed that she had an ongoing battle with brain and lung cancer that prevented her from going with Leon the night he and Janelle went missing. I was inhaling too much of the smoke, so my husband told me to go in the house and lay down. So I did, because I couldn't breathe. So is this the evil lady? I'm, I don't want to say nothing bad about her until I know she's evil, but I got a lot of stuff in I got a lot of stuff in my head right now to say about this woman. Is she evil? Said the pleading mom. And at that point, people started to realize that this poor woman was regretting letting her daughter to go out so late at night. Her message surely started to touch people's hearts. I need my baby home. 
like 15 days ago type home because she has never been away from me this long. People started to worry and came together as a community to support this worried mother. After all, Janelle was so loved by the people in the community and they were eager to do anything to get her back home safely. They started gathering donations to put together a reward for anyone who had information regarding her whereabouts. Meanwhile, the police also started working on the case and very soon, they came across a promising clue. A white pickup truck like the one Leon Tripp drove that night. This clue soon brought a sense of hope as the truck was spotted near the neighborhood where Janelle and her family lived. But when they checked the vehicle for any traces of blood or any evidence of a crime, they found nothing. Nothing. So they decided to step up their search and track the victim's phones. And to the surprise of local authorities, the phone records showed that neither Janelle nor her stepdad had been in Clarks Hill at all, which is the place where Janelle was supposed to help her stepdad out to fix his friend's broken car. And what made this even more alarming is the fact that a now 16 year old teenage girl who used to be so active online had gone silent on all her social media accounts. Clearly at this point, something was very wrong. Did someone steal her phone? Had something else happened? If someone stole your phone, you ain't gone for 15 days, I'll tell you that much. Second of all, is the dad dead too? Or is it just the little girl? Because he, if the stepdaddy ain't back, you know what I'm saying? What? Did she, did the mom off the stepdad and the daughter? Like, come on, bro. Happened along the way. Did someone steal their car and drop them off somewhere else that prevented them from getting back home? There were so many questions up in the air and no clear answers to any of them. But all of that was about to change as soon as someone came forward to say that Leon, the stepfather of Janelle, had been spotted in a location but without the presence of his stepdaughter. And soon enough, it was confirmed that Leon had actually been spotted in Atlanta, Georgia. With friends and contacts all over Atlanta, it seemed reasonable for Leon to go there, except for the fact that he was making these trips while people were looking for him and Janelle. So, it was time to track down Leon, but before doing that, the detectives involved in this case decided to dig a bit deeper into his past. It didn't take long for them to realize that in the past, Leon Tripp had been in prison due to assault charges that had something to do with cruelty to children. And on top of that, he had met Tanya while he was still behind bars. The two then fell in love. How the f do you meet somebody behind bars? Y'all got a whole dating circle in the, in the jail? Like, how does that, how do you meet somebody? How does that happen? Somebody let me know, maybe I'm stupid, but. Of and even got married while he was still in prison. And in fact, as soon as he got married while you in jail, how do you have, there's ceremony places in jail for you to get married to people that you've never met outside of jail? Y'all was writing letters back and forth. I love you, I wanna marry you, marry me. Like, come on bro, let's be realistic about our lives. Got out of jail, he went to go live with Tanya and her family right away. It was definitely not the best place for a child like Janelle or her sister to be at. And now that law enforcement had this information in hand, Leon Tripp automatically became a wanted person and officers got a warrant for his arrest on kidnapping charges. Finally, the truth was slowly coming to light. But there was just one person who didn't seem okay with any of this. And that person was Tanya Tripp. Chanel's mother. She did show concern for her daughter, but when I asked her, hey, investigators believe that he's taken her, she was very defensive. Everyone was concerned about Tanya's reaction to the news. I mean, obviously she- But she's evil. She set the whole mother thing, mother effing thing up. Didn't want to think the worst of her husband, but at this- Look at her. Anybody that wears this wig is evil. If your auntie wears this wig, she's evil. Tell her, get her a new wig. This wig is for evil people. Same time, she and had black to lipstick. I'm gonna stop pausing it, but black lipstick, you definitely evil. I tell you that much. Understand that he was the one linked to her daughter's disappearance. So shouldn't she be a bit more concerned? Was she blinded by love? Was she in denial? Was she delusional? Or was it something much worse? She's behind it all. However, soon after that, it didn't take too long for things to make sense and for the pieces of this puzzle to come together. As investigators followed through and connected the dots, they naturally came to find Leon Tripp at a U-Haul facility in DeKalb County. And sure enough, the man was not alone because right beside his side, there was Tanya Tripp herself. You were extremely shocked. I'm telling you, Tanya is the mom. Tanya is a evil bastard. 
evil bastard with a big old doogie stain like next to her nose. Uh, when we found her, look at the big old mole. Actually, at, next time y'all look at her, look at the big old the big old mole that's by her face. Disgusting. And that's when we we really got that sick feeling uh, that. You know, this case is really not heading in a good direction. But according to Tanya at the, at the time. Look at the doo-doo stain. Doo-doo, doo-doo. Lazy eye. Eyebrows fading away. I've been wanting to say this this whole time. Now that I know that she's officially evil. How many, can, can anybody count how many necks this woman has? Please. Please. Somebody count it. I, I can count how many eyebrows she got because there ain't too much left there. Fucking idiot. She had a reason to be there, and she said she just so happened to be going to Atlanta and suddenly found Leon there by accident. But at this point, no one was buying her stories anymore, and Leon was quickly arrested on kidnapping charges while- Let's talk about him. Rewind. Rewind. Buying her stories anymore, and Leon- Let's talk about him. Receding hairline. That's not- that's normal, you know what I'm saying? One patch of gray? You're an evil bastard. If you, I've never seen anybody in my life that has one patch of gray hair in their beard. If they have that, they are demonic and evil. Never trust them. I'm just saying. And was quickly arrested on kidnapping charges while Tanya was charged with hindering the apprehension of a criminal. Still, the one question that remained <laughs> hindering the apprehension of a criminal. <laughs> this how she look without that ugly wig on? You better put that piece of crap back on your head because this ain't it, sis criminal still the one question that remained that everybody was still wondering where was janelle this one's the perfect gift for Bro, a friend who's been getting a little too comfortable during quarantine maybe your son now while the authorities kept trying to find answers to this question other clues began to become clearer for example, when Tanya told the police that Janelle and her stepdad had gone missing while going to Clarks Hill, South Carolina, what Tanya was actually doing was just sending the authorities in the wrong direction, buying more time for Leon to take Janelle wherever it was that he had taken her. Moreover, it was discovered that Tanya didn't have cancer at all. She had just made the whole thing up. This revelation, obviously. You was one evil bastard to lie about having cancer. Like You, you was a... There's a special place, a special place for people like this. It got many people upset, and Tanya just kept digging herself into a deeper and deeper hole of lies. As she was processed, she gave different interviews with slightly different stories. It was clear by then, though, that she was not sticking to the truth, whatever the truth was. And to make things even more complicated, Tanya's stories began to conflict with Leon's. While Tanya sustained that her partner and Janelle had gone to South Carolina, Leon, on the other hand, was saying that he had actually taken Janelle to Atlanta. Then when authorities confronted Tanya with Leon's story, she didn't know what to say. Come to find out that she only had that initial story. She never prepared for the, for the follow-ups. In this big web of made-up stories that had little truth in them, it was hard for authorities to determine what what had actually happened to Janelle. Two things, however, were clear. Tanya and Leon had something to do with the teenager's disappearance, and Janelle's case was no longer a missing persons investigation, but a homicide one. After all, prosecutors claimed that in one of his interviews, Leon had said that Janelle was no longer alive. Was this true, or was it just another made up story? Disturbingly, the truth came to light a little less than a year later, in late March 2018. This truth wasn't pretty, and it was definitely not what people were expecting. We received a phone call from a citizen and had discovered what they believed to be human remains. When an unlucky resident of Augusta, Georgia was checking out the backyard of a vacant home, he came across a bone sticking up from a shallow grave. He, of course, quickly called the authorities to help him determine what was going on. And to their surprise, those bones were the remains of Janelle Carwell. Since Janelle had gone to the dentist a few days before her birthday, authorities were able to identify her from dental records. Both Tanya and Leon were- ch Look at these ugly bastards. These ugly mother effing bastards pissing me off. Being so ugly, that's what's really pissing me. Like, they did, all that bad stuff they did piss me off. But the fact that they got all so freaking ugly is pissing me off more. Like, look at you. Who's the man in this relationship? You both look like men. 
charged with murder. In fact, Leon even got the death penalty. But finding Janelle's body was not enough. The reason for this unfortunate death was still not clear, and no one really knew how Janelle's remains ended up in the backyard. The one thing though that started to become evident was that somehow, Leon and Tanya were trying to get rid of Janelle. And how did the authorities figure that out? Well. It took a while to reach that conclusion, but finally, with enough proof, a motion was filed in June of 2020 by the prosecutors of this case, claiming that Leon and Tanya had unsuccessfully attempted to use a hitman against their own daughter on three different occasions. Three occasions? You, yeah, this wasn't even like an impulsive, like, let's get rid of her type thing. This, they tried this multiple times and it didn't work. First of all, how does the hitman mess up? Like, come on, let's be realistic. Like, I'm not saying he should have done it, but how does the hitman mess up three times? <laughs> what type of hitman was y'all getting? Y'all Uncle Craig from down the street? Freaking idiots. Anyways, second of all, why? I don't under why are they why do they want her gone? Just kick her out the house if they don't want her there. You don't have to take her life, you stupid idiots. Like why what what do they benefit from not having her there? You know what I'm saying? What what is uh, one in September of 2015, then three months later in December 2015, and one more time in October 2016. Why would these parents do that? Well, as of right now, no one really knows for sure as this case is still open, but it is quite shocking to see how these attempts are so close in proximity to Janelle's 16th birthday in the first quarter of 2017. Perhaps they decided to take matters into their own hands after this hitman failed them multiple times. As of now though, Leon and Tanya are still in jail, waiting for their respective separate trials that have been constantly pushed back, probably due to C-19 and the fact that Leon had changed changed attorneys more than a couple of times. It seems unlikely that these two will ever tell the public why they did- Cause who would want to represent these freaking evil bastards? Not a single person want to represent these evil idiots. What they Look did. at the rolls in the back of this lady neck. Fix yourself. I mean, they're not expert liars, but they're surely stubborn when it comes to standing by their made-up stories. As for the community of Richmond County in Augusta, Georgia, Janelle's absence left a hole in their hearts, but the efforts they made were not in vain, even when Tanya didn't even have the best of intentions, and all the unused reward money they collected was used to award the Janelle Carwell Scholarship to three high school students in 2019, the year that Janelle was supposed to graduate and start college to one day become a doctor. However, Janelle's bright and charming personality definitely left a mark in the lives of many people, and they just hope that justice is swiftly served to punish those who hurt her. Man, that's so fr- I don't understand, bro. Why? Like, what do the, those idiots get out of it? I'm not even gonna say parents, because y'all are not parents. Y'all are demons. Certified demons. Like, what do they get out of that? You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know in the comments down below. What do y'all think that they get at? Get in their mind, please. Because I need to know there's nothing. They don't get no life insurance money. They don't get no. They don't get no. They get a free house so they can rub each other's back together or something. What, what the? What the? Cause I, I, I don't know, bro. I got nothing. I have absolutely, literally nothing. Like, Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. That was fucking crazy. But if you want to see something else that's crazy, I just reacted to this video, this lady that pretended to be a man. Well, she was, she ain't tell her boyfriend that she was a man until it was too late. I highly suggest y'all watch this video right here because that was, that would make somebody want to hire a hitman. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I'm going to see y'all out.